Hi friends, today I'm sharing my recipe for savory Mauritian style crepes. So in Mauritius, uh, crepes are much more popular than pancakes and we do both a sweet and savory ones. But for today, I'm sharing the recipe for the savory one. In fact, I do have uh, another recipe that I shared a few years ago on the blog. But what I do differently now is that I add a little bit of aquafaba in the batter. So if you're not familiar with the aquafaba, it's the liquid that comes from uh, boiling uh, beans, so chickpeas or any other beans, or it's the liquid that you can collect from a can of uh, chickpeas or beans. So I boil my own beans and I save that liquid and then I keep it in a jar in the refrigerator for when for whenever I need to use it. So it keeps for about a week in the refrigerator. So using a aquafaba in the batter actually makes uh, the crepes a lot um, nicer in terms of the texture but it also cooks a lot better too so it, I really recommend using it but if you do not have any aquafaba on hand so you can just uh, substitute it with more water or more um, plant-based milk any milk that you're using I'm going to be using coconut milk today but you can use uh, other plant-based milk some people find making crepes rather difficult but I'm going to be sharing a few tips with you today that will make the process um, easier and a lot more enjoyable. So now let's get started. When French crepes meet a soupçon of finely chopped spring onions, bringing in a Chinese touch to this concoction, you're in for a Mauritian savory indulgence. The characteristic of the Mauritian savory crepe is the addition of finely chopped scallions or spring onions into the batter mix. For variation, you can also add coriander leaves or cilantro. The original recipe would call for all-purpose flour, but to make this recipe a little bit healthier, I'm going to be using a mixture of whole spelt and white spelt. So but if you do not have uh, spelt flour, you could use just all-purpose flour or a little bit of whole wheat as well mixed in. Add all the dry ingredients as per the recipe in a large mixing bowl. Instead of artificial yellow food colouring, I like to add a pinch of turmeric. This also adds to the taste of these crepes. Whisk everything together well. Next, add in the coconut milk. I'm using homemade coconut milk. Check the link for the video on how to make it. If you want to substitute the coconut milk with another non-dairy milk like soy or oat milk, I suggest adding one tablespoon of either vegetable, olive or coconut oil in the batter mix. Like mentioned previously, aquafaba does work its magic into this eggless crepe recipe. Not only does it noticeably add fluffiness to the texture, but its eggy characteristic makes the crepe a lot easier to handle when cooking. If you do choose to eliminate the aquafaba, Make sure to add a little baking powder into the flour to keep some airiness in the crepes. Now whisk all the ingredients together until a thick batter is obtained. Keep whisking vigorously to remove all the lumps and also to activate the aquafaba. It is easier to whisk the ingredients into a thicker smooth batter first, then add the water to thin it out to a pouring or runny consistency. Depending on the type of flour you're using, you may need to adjust the amount of water to more or less. Alternatively, if you're not sure that you can break all the lumps away, simply place all the ingredients in a blender, except for the chopped spring onions, and process until smooth. 
or pass the batter through a fine sieve. Finally, add in the spring onions and mix well to incorporate evenly. Keep a small bowl of oil on the side for cooking. You can use a non-stick pan if you wish, but I recommend either a good French-made carbon steel crepe pan or a cast iron griddle like the one I'm using. An Indian tower also works well. To brush the oil on, I like to use a paper towel with the ends folded in toward the center to form a sort of balloon. This works well for a thin coating of oil rather than using a brush. You can also use a piece of clean cotton cloth. Heat the pan on medium-high temperature. Once the pan is hot, with the first light fumes starting to appear, ladle the batter onto it. Using the back of the spoon, swirl it around into a circular motion to spread it out thinly and evenly. Alternatively, if you have a light pan, you can pick it up and tilt the pan to swirl the batter around into a circular shape. Allow the crepe to cook for about 30 seconds on one side, then slide a thin spatula underneath around the edges. The spatula should be able to easily glide under the crepe. If it doesn't, wait for a few more seconds. Then flip the crepe and cook for another 30 seconds on the other side. Remove the crepe from the pan and place on a plate. Then repeat for the rest of the batter. Whichever pan you're using, especially the carbon steel or cast iron ones, make sure to season the pan properly beforehand and according to the manufacturer's instructions. No matter the amount of diligence you put in, a poorly seasoned pan will most probably not spare your delicate crepes. Each pan is different and you will have to understand the temperature and heat distribution of yours to make successful crepes. Keep adjusting the temperature of the pan as needed, that is if it gets too hot or too cool. If the pan is too hot, the batter will cook too fast and you won't have time to swirl it around properly. Reduce the heat and allow the pan to cool a little, then continue cooking. Also, the crepe will tend to stick to the pan and may be difficult to detach. If the crepe is too thick or turning out to be pasty, the batter may be too thick. Thin it out with a little water and try again. If you're trying to flip the crepe too early, this very often results in a crepe that ends up into a pasty blob. Be patient and wait for the right moment. If you feel some resistance with the spatula, wait for a few more seconds, then try to glide the spatula underneath again. Don't let your attempts at making crepes give you the creeps. With enough attention and a little patience, your crepes will be successful and soon you'll be making huge stacks of them. Stacking the crepes on one another will keep them soft. Mauritian savory crepes are traditionally served with coriander or cilantro chutney. Check out the recipe for this chutney in one of our previous videos. The link is in the description. A smear of coriander chutney as filling lends a refreshing note and seals this unctuous crepe off for an ultimate Mauritian decadent melange. Take a bite into these delectable crepes and you'll be left wondering what kind of sorcery has gone into them. It's no wonder there is no straightforward answer to the question what is Mauritian cuisine like? As usual, you can find a printable version of this recipe and some tips on how to make successful crepes on our website. The link is in the description. What kind of fillings do you like with your savory crepes? Let us know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the recipe. Cheers and bye!